what we're going to be going over here is cost volume profit analysis and we're going to be looking at the case here where we, the company has to determine how many units of a certain product they have to sell in order to break even that's the point here where you, their total costs are going to really equal the total revenues they have for the product so we're going to be looking at it in terms of a cost volume profit graph here and we'll look at it in just terms of a single unit that the company is selling here and uh, it's going to be based on uh, net income before taxes equal to zero. So all we want to do is determine the number of units that the company has to sell here in order to break even, and that's what they call the break even point. So what we're going to be going through is just go through this graph, and then based on this, the graph here, the relationships will determine that the number of qu uh, quantity of units they have to sell here in order to break even. Okay, so before we get into a graph, let's go up and let's look at the reference key. So we're going to start out with P here is going to equal the unit sales price. That's on a per unit basis here. And then X here is the number of units that we're going to sell. V is going to be the unit variable cost on a per unit basis here. And then TFC here is that's a total fixed cost. TVC here is a total variable cost. And then TR equals S here, the sales. That's our total revenue or sales here. TC, total cost, that'd be the fixed and variable cost. And then TCM is our total contribution margin. Okay, so starting with our CP uh, cost volume profit graph here. So what we're going to have along our x-axis, those are going to be the number of units here that their company is going to have to sell. So that's what we're going to have to determine. How many units here? And it, units is it, uh, x here. x equals the number of units or the quantity that we're going to sell. So the company has to determine how many units they have to sell here to break even here. And that, so on our x-axis, we got our number of units. Along our y-axis here, that's our dollars, our revenues and our costs and so forth. Okay, so what the two lines that we're going to be dealing with here, first we're going to have our revenues line here. That's our total revenues. And that's really represented by the sales price here on a unit basis times the number of units sold. So sales price times the number of units, that's going to equal our, uh, our point here. Our break-even point is going to be determined here between our total revenues and our total costs. So we looked at our total revenues. Now for our total costs here. So our total cost line, well, first off, we've got our fixed cost that we have to cover here. So we're going to have, that's constant regardless how many units you sell. So on our y-axis, we got, we start out with a fixed cost. And then on top of that, we have our variable cost. And that's that variable cost per unit here times the number of units that we're going to sell here. So on, we start out with our fixed cost, add the variable cost to it, and then we're going to get to this intersection point where our total revenues equals our total cost. And then what else we have to define here on our graph? Well, we got our total fixed cost is shown here. Total revenues is shown up. This is the green line here, total revenues. That's the sales price times the number of units here. And our total cost that's that total total variable cost here that total cost that blue line here the total variable cost plus the total fixed cost equals our total cost so our variable cost again was that variable unit cost times the number of units here and then the other thing we have here is a total contribution margin and that's really the difference between our total revenues and our total variable cost okay so that's our model that we're this is the break-even point that we have to determine where our total revenues intersects with our total cost here Total revenues here was price, a sales price per unit times the number of units we sell. All right, so we're going to be solving for our x here. All right, so let's go up and let's look at our simple equation here. So CPV, cost volume profit, the basic concept is this is where our total revenues equals our total cost plus the profit. And in our case here, we're going to be looking at a profit. We're going to set that equal to zero, but that's the basic formula we use here for cost volume profit analysis. So what we're going to do here, we're going to have our total revenues are going to equal our total cost plus our net income before taxes. And all that, all these formulas here are going to have to be, you restate them in terms of unit sales, unit prices, and unit costs here. And in our case, this net income before taxes is going to be set to zero. But anyway, moving on here, total revenues equals our total cost, which is our total fixed cost, plus our total variable cost, plus the net income before taxes. So then rearranging the equation here, moving our total variable cost over to this side here, total revenues minus our total variable cost equals our total fixed cost plus our net income before taxes. 
And just remember here that total revenues, uh, difference between our total revenues and our total variable cost, that equals our total contribution margin. Okay, so total re uh, solving for our total contribution margin now equals our total fixed cost plus our net income before taxes. Okay, so this is the general solution here for using that format here. We're going to solve for x here, and those x represents the new units needed for our break-even point here. Again. We set that net income here before taxes equal to zero here. So we're just solving for the number of units for break even. So we take our total revenues is going to equal our total cost. So total revenues here equals our total cost is our total fixed cost plus our total variable cost here. I have everything color coded here to help understand what you're looking at here. So our total revenues, that would be our price a unit price times the number of units we're selling here, P times X, that's going to equal our total fixed cost plus our total variable cost. And the total variable cost here is the uh, unit variable cost times the number of units here. Okay, so now we can rearrange this equation just by moving our VX over onto the other side of the equation. So our, our Total revenues here, price times the number of units were unit quantity here, L less our variable cost. Moved it over this side of the equation. A variable variable unit cost times the number of units here is going to equal our total fixed cost. Okay, so now we can factor out the x term here. That's what we're looking for. So our price, sales price, less our variable unit cost here. That difference times the number of units we have to sell is going to equal our total fixed cost here. Okay, so Again, this total contribution margin here, that was our price less our variable cost times number of units here, again, equals our total fixed cost. All right, just to point that out here. So we could just take and we can just solve for this equation right here. We just solve for x based on our price less our variable cost equals our total fixed cost. Okay, so what we would do is let's just move, divide both sides here by P minus V here. So I've done that here. So they cancel out here on this side of the equation, but then it, we'd have to divide our total fixed cost by that amount here. So X here, number of units that we have to sell equals our total fixed cost here divided by the, our contribution margin here, our price times our uh, variable, our price looking at our variable co cost on a per unit basis. So just divide those out here. X equals our total fixed cost divided by price minus our variable cost on a per unit basis. So that is just solving for x. So the point is here, you can go through and just plug, to use this generalized solution here. You can go in and put in your different terms here, your different costs and uh, different uh, sales prices, costs, variable costs to determine your total revenues and your total cost. And you're, we're solving just for x here. Now we were able, we solved just for the quantity that we had to produce here based on the uh, uh, net income before taxes, we set that equal to zero. Okay, so that's our generalized solution. And let's go down here and let's look at it, understand our income statement here and relate it to this graph that we went through here. So we, we solve for X here, the break even point where our total revenues equals our total cost based on those total units here. Okay, so now relating this graph to, let's just say our income statement so you understand the inputs here. So. Uh, it's really a seven-step procedure getting down to our contribution margin that we were talking about and then that income before taxes. So really we want to get down to that point. So we start with our direct material used, beginning materials, add your uh, purchase materials for the period, just subtract your ending materials here from it and unbalanced gives you your direct materials that you've used. So your manufacturing costs will be direct materials plus your direct labor plus your variable factory overhead that keep equals your total variable manufacturing cost. So then your cost of goods manufactured equals your total manufactured cost plus the beginning work and process minus any ending work and process equals your total cost of goods manufactured. Then your cost of goods sold is going to equal your cost of goods manufactured plus uh, your beginning finished goods minus any ending finished goods equals your variable cost of goods sold here. Now we get down to our manufacturing margin. This is our sales less our variable cost of goods sold equals our manufacturing margin. Then our contribution margin equals our manufacturing margin, less our variable sales and administrative cost, that equals our contribution margin. And then 
our contribution margin here, that's what, that was our income before taxes here, less any fixed factory overhead, less any fixed salary and administrative expenses equals the net income before taxes. And in our case here, this net income before taxes, we set equal to zero here. But what I wanted to go through here is just so you understand when we're talking about our break-even points and what, what all is included and, and how you handle those variable and fixed costs and what is a variable cost and what is a fixed cost here. So this uh, contribution margin that we were looking at, that includes all the variable costs for manufacturing and non-manufacturing costs. And then when we got down to our net income here before taxes, which we set equal to zero in this case, this is where we have to deduct all our fixed costs here, manufacturing and non-manufacturing. I just wanted to expand into this income statement here so you understood uh, what type of cost we're looking at here when you're looking at your total revenues here versus your total costs here. Okay, so that, that'll go through our generalized solution here for determining our break-even point here.